to Isaiah 45 and 18. Uh, brother, what was your brother's name again? What was your brother's name again? Not you, him. <laughs> brother, what was your brother's name again? Luke? Let's welcome Luke. I think he's also a first time visitor. We're so glad that he came tonight. Praise the Lord. My brother's bringing family. I like to see that. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and turn to Isaiah 45 and 18. <clears throat> Jesus, bless my voice to make it through the night. Praise God. I'm not going to preach more than 20. I'm going to quit at 830. I'm giving you a commitment. Done or not. I know we're tired. It's cold and We've had a wonderful time in God, so I'm only going to preach until 8.30, and it's 8.05 right now. <clears throat> Isaiah 45 and 18 reads as follows, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord. And there is none else. Let's pray. Jesus. Oh, we believe in you today. We believe this word of God. We know that you alone are God. There is no one else other than you. We will not worship any other God than the Lord God Jesus. Can I get an amen? amen. Praise God. <clears throat> you may be seated. Hallelujah. We've been talking about the damage or the defeat. Or the death from idolatry. The three D's of idolatry. Damage, defeat, and death. That's what you get when you deal with idolatry. This is part two. And all the scriptures we dealt with on Sunday. We're talking about the idea. There's only one God. He is the only God. There is no other God. And you can go ahead and seek other gods all you want to. But they're made by man, idols and gods that are not real. You get nothing from them. And we talked about that Sunday and we're going to continue to, to learn about that. If you were not here on Sunday, <clears throat> I desperately want you to watch the sermon online. It is now available. I'm going to do something I haven't done for a while. We'd like to welcome all the web viewers. Praise God. Thank you for uh, uh, joining in and getting some word. Uh, you won't be sorry when you pay attention to the preaching in this church. You will be fed spiritually. Can I get an amen? amen? Praise God. The word of God comes out of this pulpit in truth. <clears throat> there is only one God and there's none else. But remember, what we tend to think is that worshiping another religion or, or idols is only what the old Israel did when they were making trinkets and all that stuff. That's not the only form of idolatry, and that's really what we started on Sunday. That there's other ways to make things God in your life. Let me give you a quick definition. Anything you put before God becomes an idol unto you. I'll say that again. Anything that you put before God, you put that first in God's second, third, or fourth, or even fifth or sixth in some people's lives. Whatever you put before God becomes an idol. Now, let's go on to Isaiah 45 and 21. Remember we were in Isaiah 43, 44, 45, and 46. And the same thing was being repeated over and over again. That means God's trying to get our attention, church. He keeps saying it. There's no other God other than me. Let's go on to Isaiah 45, 21, which is just a few lines down. It, it continues to say, tell ye and bring them near ye. Let them take counsel together who have declared this from ancient time, who have told it from that time. Have not I the Lord? That's a question. Haven't I been saying this since ancient time? And there is no God else besides me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Verse 22, look unto me and be ye saved, 
all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. How, I mean, how many times did he just say it in them two scriptures, two verses? Repeated over and over again. But what I want to focus on is that who really wants to be saved? Who really wants to be saved? It says here, if you want to be saved, you've got to look on to him. The one only true God. And not lean on false gods. Or other things that you put before God in your life. And today's, listen, today is a busy society. And we've, oh come on, here, here it comes. The Lord's going to, poof, are you ready? Getting too busy for God. When you're too busy for God, then you're way too busy. I'm going to say that again. If you're too busy for God then you're way, way too busy. And that's when we begin, when we get that busyness and we got a lot of things going on, we end up putting things before God. And what does that become? That becomes an idol unto you. And we need to learn that church very carefully. Isaiah 46 and 5. So we're going, we've been in Isaiah 43, 44, 45, 46. Isaiah 46 and 5. To whom, oh boy, here we go. This is where it gets fun. This is what I told you I was going to continue with last week. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be alike? Let me just stop there for a second. People that say that they have to do something else besides pray, besides read their Bibles, I'm going to just focus on the reading Bibles for a second. I'm going to tell you something. I'm just as guilty as anybody in here of putting all these things before reading my Bible. Remember when I was preaching not too long ago? I love the Lord. Everybody love the Lord? Woo! <laughs> I was preaching not too long ago telling the church the truth about myself because that's what helps me fix me so I'm not a hypocrite as I preach because I am a human being. I said, church, I watch too many movies. And I dedicated in my heart to change it. God, I've been working on me for a long time. I tell my wife, I've threatened her like four times. I'm going to cut off Blockbuster. I kept saying, you keep messing with me, watch. I'm going to turn it off. Because I got the movie pass, right? <clears throat> and then I preach it to the church. Usually when I preach it to the church, that's when something really happens. So I preach it to the church. A few weeks later, Blockbuster, close down. <laughs> I, don't, I, think, I don't think I got a movie sense. I love the Lord. He knows what I need. He shut it down. Just for me. <laughs> Praise God. But I'm here to tell you, church. I had a trouble. I was reading too little and watching too much. So, you know, the next thing God does is, okay, well, you know, I need to read my Bible more. So he gives me a job where I, I have to read my Bible more. <laughs> And that's as far as I'm taking it right now. Is, is that thing taping? Okay, yeah. As far as you have a question, you can ask me about it later. <laughs> but I read lots of Bible now. I'm reading like 50 chapters a week. When I had trouble reading two or three. Now, don't get me wrong. I would study my sermons and I would study the Bible to, to, to prepare for my sermons. But to me, that wasn't enough. Because what am I saying to the church? Church, you got to read your Bibles. And then I say, well, I'm reading mine because I'm studying. No, I, I'm telling the church they need to have a, a steady regimen of pr praying and reading a certain amount per day. But all those things, I'm going to tell you right now, Blockbuster became an idol in my life. I'm just going to put it out there just the way it is. Blockbuster became an idol because I would rather, and, and, and this is human, but... I want to be less human and more godly. I want to be less human and more spiritual. I would, it's normal. I'd come home from work, you know, tired, want to kick back. I like watching something while I'm eating my food. And I'm looking, once I start watching, turn it off is not as easy as it, as it sounded. Oh, I'll just watch a part of it and go to sleep. Or I'll watch part of it and go do something else. But it happens real easy. You go in there, you, you're tired, you pop in a movie and kick back. And you think that you deserve it because you've been working so hard all day. But I'm here to tell you, if you're doing that five nights a week, but you've only read one day out of seven, 
I'm here to tell you, church, that's why I believe that the Lord guided me to that study that we're talking about. I've got a regiment right now that even if I, I didn't have a job that, that allowed me to read so much, I know I can read three, three to five chapters a day easy because I'm reading like 15 a day right now. 15 chapters. So two to five chapters will be nothing. I'm keeping this church because I'm feeling the anointing of God as a result of reading this stuff. I'm going to tell you something. Three years ago when I fell on my face, did a bunch of things wrong and tore up a whole bunch in my life. If I had been reading like I, I am right now, that would have never happened. I know there's some things that, that, that were partly my doing and partly the doing of other people. I've forgiven those people. I've forgiven myself. But I've been tempted. But this word, when you're reading, destroys temptation. It destroys temptation. It takes the temptation right away. Oh my goodness. So powerfully. Because all I'm reading about uh, Jeremiah and Isaiah is, oh, I'm the only God. And you know what? If you put something before me, then that's an idol. If I go do something that's against God, I make that thing my idol instead of serving the Lord or seeking God instead of seeking those things that are going to harm me. Ooh, what a, you want to learn how to repent? Learn to read. Mm. You know what all I'm hearing is... Oh, look at the thing. Well, I'm, I don't want to get ahead of my sermon here, but I'm hearing all about the destruction and the separation from all of the rebellion that came from the children of Israel constantly over and over. And God is so wounded and he just is, is, is just hurting over the fact that his people won't serve him and keep choosing something else. And I'm hearing the voice of God through the word of God reminding me how God feels when I won't lean on him. And I don't want to make God feel that way. And I don't want the consequences. Let me tell you something. I just read this the other day. When Judah was getting ready to get taken to Babylon. It said very clearly God was talking through Jeremiah. Telling the people. I'm going to. You know you're so funny. They got idols all over the place. They're serving all kinds of different gods. Even the children of Israel. And the king of Judah. And God's like, you need to put that away. Talks through the man of God, through Jeremiah the prophet. Thus saith the Lord, remove these things from my house. Remove these things from my presence. And you know what they do? Shut up, Jeremiah. Yeah, I know it's a bad word. Huh? He's like, oh. You know what we're going to do? Poof. Say it again. Poof. Say it again. Poof. They beat him up, beat him down, put him in stocks for what? For telling them the truth. I, I should be a little grateful right now because I get to be a prophet who tells the truth. I don't get beat up. <laughs> Woo, praise God. Man, I'm not going to be able to finish this today. I'm, I'm going to quit at 830. I'm telling you right now. But I've got to give you the word. You know what they did? Then here comes the Babylonians ready to take him and they're going to siege him around the city. And, and guess what they do now? Oh, God. God, go to the prophet. Come on, call on God for us. Really? Well, where were you when God was right there trying to warn you and you didn't want it, but now that we're in trouble, oh God, help me. Oh, I'm talking to everybody now. We've all done that. We've all done that. Oh, all the promises we make to God when things are the worst. Oh God, if you'll get me out of this one, what I will do for you. And what does he do? He's faithful. He gets you out. And you're like, ha, whew, man, I'm glad I almost, whew, I'm glad I got out of that one. Did you hear what I just said? I'm glad I got out of that one. You didn't get out of nothing. The Lord answered your prayer and got you out. And how do you repay him? Boop, boop. And then we get in trouble again because we won't follow God. Because if we follow God, we will stop getting in trouble so much. And we get in trouble again. Oh, God. Now I want you. But you know what Jeremiah told him? Thus saith the Lord. You know what? 
you are going to, not only are you going to get taken into Babylon, but you're going to be sieged for so long that you're going to have to deal with the sword. You're going to have to deal with pestilence and famine. And you're going to be so hungry that you're going to eat your own children. And then you're going to eat each other because you're so desperate in famine. And then those that stay in the city are going to get burned up or cut up. And the ones that go off with the Babylonians are going to be able to live, but live in bondage. But they had an opportunity, church. But they wanted to follow those things that were not of God and put everything before God until <laughs> I'm in trouble. Until I'm in trouble. And then they want to cry out to God, church, listen, I just have to say it. We have to stop being like the children of Israel. And the only way we're going to do that is by reading our Bibles and hearing what they did and saying, I am not going to make that mistake. I am not going to make that mistake. Verse 6 says, they lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver in the balance and hire a goldsmith and he maketh it a god and they fall down and they worship. Something that can't do anything for them. But yet there is a God who can do everything for them. And they want to fall down to nothing. And then they want to make that idol equal to God. I don't know a job in this room. Anybody who's, that's just anywhere near God. And the glory that comes with serving him first. Now don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about those people who are working. You got to work. But like I said, your goal is... Let me tell you where some of us the problem is. If our, our goal should be, and if we're not doing this, then we're being like the children of Israel. Once we have that job, we have got to be the best. And we've got to be seeking to get those days off to be in the house of God. Because the enemy is going to use those things to try to get you out just for a day. Just for a Sunday. Just for a Thursday. Maybe two in a row. And your body and your flesh becomes a custom of not being in the presence of God. And it becomes so much easier. Just, I'll go next week. I'll go tomorrow. I, I, I'm going to go back. I'll, I'm going to go. Then it becomes not even a date. Just, I'm going to do it. Down the road somewhere. I'm going to go back. It's too easy. The flesh, remember, the spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. And I hate to tell you, you all live in a fleshly body. But we've got to increase that spirit within us. They fall down and they worship something that can't do anything for them. And this is what God has to say. I'm almost done. <laughs> Isaiah 46 and 9 says, remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Verse 40, uh, sorry, go down to 47.10. We're still in Isaiah. Isaiah 47. i got five minutes, praise God. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Oh, come on, somebody. We rely on our own strength and our own wickedness to get the job done instead of relying on God. Thou hast said, none seeth me. <laughs> no one can see my sin. God can't see me. Do you really think there's anything that you could cover yourself with that God's not going to see it? Nobody sees me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge it have perverted thee. That's why when some people are too smart for, them, for their own good, the intelligence takes them right out of the house of God. It hath perverted thee, and thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and there is none else besides me. Let me tell you something where that fits. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you where that fits. Whenever we decide, oh come on, somebody hear me. When we decide... That we know the answer. We know what's best for us. Other than the word of God. Then we are saying there is none else but me. Because our desires and our mindset becomes greater than that of the word of God. 
and we get too smart, we rationalize and justify, and we begin to become a God unto ourselves. I can decide what I'm going to do. I'm here to tell you that I'm a slave. And I'm not afraid to be a slave. And I'm not afraid to be a black man and say I'm a slave. I am a slave. And I choose to be a slave to the Lord. I can't do what I want to do. I can't do everything I want. I've got to limit myself in areas because I'm a slave unto God. Oh, Jesus. Because if I'm not a slave, then I become my own master. That's not in my notes, church. If we do not act like a slave to the Lord, then we begin to know what's best for our own lives, even if it goes against the Word of God. And it happens every day across churches all over the world. Verse 47, I'm sorry, chapter 47, verse 11. Three minutes. I ain't lying. Watch. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Here it goes. Consequence. This is what's going to happen. If you make yourself your own God and don't follow the word of God, don't be a slave, but be a master. See, that's what society tells you. You've got to be, a, you're the master. I'm the slave. I'm the servant. Evil shall come upon thee that thou shalt not know from whence it rises. And mischief shall fall upon thee, and thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. We wonder why our lives start falling apart. It's okay to, for your life to fall apart when you're in church, because that just means that's life. But when you're outside of church and your life falls apart, that's because you're not in church. And I'd rather my life fall apart while I'm in here than my life fall apart while I'm out there. Because out there, there is desolation and mischief and des Oh, come on, somebody. It comes and it holds on. You got to be careful what, what you let hold on to you because you might not be able to get it. Be careful what you let hold on to you because you might not be able to get it off. 47.13, thou art wearied in the multitude of the counselors. Let now the astrologers, I'm ending right here. Babe, you can come on up. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counselors. 47 and 13. <clears throat> Getting direction from every which way. All of, my aunt told me, my grandma told me, my boss told me. What does the word tell you? Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. You know what's God saying? You know what he's saying? If you're going to serve those gods and put everything else before God, let those things solve your problems. And you know what happens? It don't work and it don't happen. And then what do we do? We go crowing again. Because we try all that stuff. It doesn't work. Try the drugs. Try the alcohol. Try the sex. Try everything you want. Ain't gonna work. And God's gonna tell you to lean on those things. Prognosticators. That's my $25 word of the day. Prognosticators. <laughs> lean on them. You can stand up now. <clears throat> we, need, we need to make some commitments to the Lord. We need to make some commitments on to the Lord. Uh, 47, 15 says this. Thus shall they be unto thee with which whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander everyone to his quarter. None shall save thee. I'm here to tell you, church, the only thing that's going to save you is our God. That's why they call him our Savior. And there's no other Savior other than God. No other Savior other than Jesus. Don't lean on something else to take you out. Don't lean on that woman, that man, that job, that hobby. Don't lean on those things that are unproductive for you. Lean on the mighty God. I want you to think about what you have been putting. Listen, somebody in here has been putting things before God. Because every time God gives me these sermons to preach, that means that there's someone in the house that needs that sermon. 
So I know somebody in here has got to deal with this issue. And I know I was dealing with it myself. And today, I have mastered that problem. I want to challenge you to master that in your life. You've got to do some self-reflection and ask, what am I putting before God? Now, most of you here are pretty faithful to the house of the Lord. But are you, are you faithful to your reading? If you're, if you're faithful to your reading, are you faithful to your praying? Are you faithful in paying tithes? Are you faithful in, in, in attendance? There's all kinds of things. You, are you faithful in separating from sin and keeping sin out of your life? These altars are open right now for you to come and reconnect with the Lord. Start asking God. Listen, you could ask him right now. Lord, what is it that I'm putting before you? And I believe the Lord will show it to you. He will bring it to your attention. He will bring it to your mind and to your understanding. Let's focus on putting the Lord first in our lives. I'm here to tell you we have a Savior and His name is Jesus. In Jesus' name.